office on location talking to New Mexico State head football coach Doug Martin. I should say new head football coach because, Coach, it's, it's been just a brief moment. It has. It's been a whirlwind. It's been fast, but uh, it's been a lot of fun getting things started and putting a program in place. And uh, what kind of task is that, putting that program in place? I mean, you, you, you come in, you guys were able to hold your recruits and everything like that, and you come in and you're trying to take this thing to the next spot. Yeah, you know, Van, our assistant coaches did a great job of holding that recruiting class together and, and uh, can't say enough about the effort they put forth. And then it was putting the staff together was the next thing. You know, we had a couple of coaches to hire, offensive coordinator. We hired Greg Brandon, who was offensive coordinator at Wyoming. That was a big hire for us. Greg's a tremendous coach and has a lot of experience and has been a head coach himself, so big help to me. And then we also hired a second strength coach for football. Uh, our administration's really made a commitment to the strength department, which is going to help us a lot. And uh, that, you know, with, with the second strength coach, uh, do you talk about that, how much that can benefit a team? Yeah, I think everybody understands how the strength and conditioning and nutrition has changed the game of football today, especially in college. And uh, colleges are just now catching on to the nutrition part of that. And we hired Don Decker, who had been the strength coach at the University of Arkansas and then at Ole Miss for six years and has a tremendous background in developing players. I mean, our players have already really taken to him. There's a lot of motivation, a lot of confidence coming from him. Yeah, that's impressive. And you guys, you, you'll need everything you can to get out there. And, you know, going independent that first year, you, how, how, what, what kind of challenge is that for you? You know, like, uh, or, or do you prefer that your first year coming in because you've been around football so long? going in as an independent. Yeah, you know what, there's some great advantages to it, uh, in particular our schedule this year. When you look at the games that we're able to get in Las Cruces, I mean, this has never happened before. We've got the University of Minnesota, a Big Ten team, coming in that to Las Cruces. We have UTEP, which will be a sold-out game. And then we also have Boston College. I was at Boston College last year, so I'm very familiar with them. And have them coming in, uh, San Diego State, Rice. I mean, there are some tremendous games for us to play in front of our home crowd. And, that's one of the biggest advantages we've had from this independent schedule. And uh, you, you talk about that schedule. That schedule, that's a pretty tough schedule. And you, you come out to bat, uh, come, come to the gate right away looking to, uh, to uh, swing away at the tough teams and not back, duck down it from anybody. Uh, I mean, that's, that's really impressive. Well, absolutely. And, you know, when kids come to play football, they want to play against the best. You know, they want to challenge and, and, and go play against the best competition they can. If they, if they don't want to do that, I don't want them. You know, I want kids that want to go compete at that level. And so when we were ever sit in a young man's living room and tell him, hey, you're going to get to play Texas, you're going to get to play UCLA, if they didn't get excited about that, there's something wrong with them. And we're excited about that as coaches. And, uh, again, it just begins uh, a tremendous opportunity for us. And those games will only make us better. And then when we get back and play in the mid-major level, you know, the game will slow down and we'll be able to really compete well. And uh, as far as the fan support stuff like that, are you hoping that – getting names like this and, and then going out in the community and all that stuff that, that would bring the fans in and, and get that fan base built up? Yeah, absolutely. I think the home games that we have, uh, our fans would be really excited about seeing Boston College, Minnesota, and us competing against them at home. And then, you know, you bring up a great point. That's the untapped source at Las Cruces is the fan base. Uh, and I think they've just been waiting for somebody to reach out to them. You know, and that's really our job as coaches and as players to get involved and be visible in that community and reach out to them and I, I really believe that uh, they will take ownership of our football team if we do that. And how, how do you reach out to them as far as uh, when, when, you, when you're trying to win them over and it's been like you said they've, they've been hungry to have a, a winner what do you do are you going to try different kind of promotions or what, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, right now our players are, you know, are doing a tremendous job of getting out in the community. We've been to boys clubs, girls clubs, rec centers. I mean, we're, we're doing every elementary schools, just trying to be a part of the community. I mean, you know, I, I don't think you can go ask those people for something unless you're giving something. You know, so we're really trying to give back to our community and our campus and get the students and the people of the city to know us personally. You know, people know you personally. They want to come see you do well. So that's the job for us as coaches and players is to get out and meet as many people as we can. What do you think is going to be like your biggest challenge as far as uh, getting this thing going and, and just the whole, when you look at the whole program and you being the head coach, what is, the, what is your biggest challenge? Well, I think it's obviously overcoming the tradition that has been there lately. Um, but, you know, when you look back at New Mexico State, uh, the years that uh, Charlie Johnson was playing quarterback there, 59 and 60, those were bowl teams, and he's the two-time MVP of the uh, Sun Bowl. The guy played in the NFL. Joe Pasarczyk was an NFL quarterback that played there. I mean, there's some great stories to be told about New Mexico State football, and I, I think it's putting the focus on that and not just the, the recent 
past, uh, you know, because there are some really good things. And getting over that hurdle and just gaining confidence. Sarchak, I think he was just named uh, NFL alumni uh, executive, executive director. director. Yeah. yeah so. And, and, you know, what a tremendous honor for one of your alums to be in that role. I mean, there's not many schools anywhere that can say they have an alum that's in that position in the NFL. I, I just talked to Joe yesterday. He's coming back for our spring game. Uh, so getting all those guys, former players, you know, reintroduced to the program is, is a big factor also. You, you've got your recruiting class going back to that. Um, how do you feel like you address needs and, and uh, are you excited about what's coming? Yeah, I am. I thought, you know, we had some big needs at linebacker and uh, we, I thought we did a really good job of filling that. Uh, a couple of big offensive linemen. Running back was another big need and, and we got a kid there that we feel really good about. So I think overall team speed is really good in that class. Uh, the big deal for us is, is just a shift in how we're going to recruit. It's been very heavily dominated in the junior college system. I'd like to get away from that and be more involved in uh, the high schools, uh, you know, particularly here in New Mexico. You know, there, there's going to be players here that you can develop that will be Division One A players in New Mexico. And then we also want to try to reach out and really put together a real comprehensive walk-on program to get as many kids from New Mexico involved in our program as we possibly can. Because, you know, somewhere down the line, those kids may earn scholarships. And even if they don't, they're going to be better off for being in the program, and we're going to be better off for having more local kids in our football program. And we really want that to be the backbone of what we're doing. And how, when you look at what you have and, and uh, your plan and stuff like that, how many, do you think this is a, a marathon or is it a sprint or is it a half, half marathon? What is it? <laughs> I hope it's a sprint. You know, <laughs> everybody would like to have that quick fix, man. But, you know, I'm more interested in the process of what we're going through. I, I want to see us win in the classroom right now. I want to see us win in the community right now. Uh, you know, and I want to see us win on the practice field right now, learn how to compete with each other. Uh, and then eventually that's going to spill over to the field on game day. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what that time frame is. I can't say that, but I can promise people we're going to put a much better product on the field than has been there recently. Coach Doug Martin, New Mexico State football coach, spending time with us. So, Coach, we appreciate your time. Lex behind the camera, I'm Van Tate. We'll see you next time. <laughs>